Okay, shall we start? Yes, yes, please. Good afternoon and welcome to the press conference after the General Affairs Council meeting today. The Romanian Minister Delegate for European Affairs, Mr. George Ciamba, who presided the meeting today, and the first Vice President of the European Commission, Mr. Franz Timmermans, will present you the results. Afterwards, the floor will be open for questions. Minister Ciamba, please, you have Thank you, and um, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Welcome you to the, to the press conference following the General Affairs Council meeting chaired by the Romanian Presidency. Today, we had a very busy agenda which is going to continue in the afternoon with another formation of the General Affairs Council. First and foremost, I'd like to start with the legislative part. Uh, we have been, we, uh, since it refers to two subjects of particular importance for the ongoing developments, the next European elections and Brexit. First, the Council approved uh, today a regulation which provides for a verification of procedure related to infringements of rules on the protection of personal data in the context of elections to the European Parliament. The, uh, this regulation allows to impose financial sanctions on European political parties if they, if they breach data protection rules in order to influence the outcome of the European Parliament elections. You know, we, this is one of the priorities of the Romanian Presidency. The, during these three months to bring a substantial contribution to increase the resilience and security of the EU's the democratic systems. And I think this, what we have done today, it's a good is going to bring complementarity with what we already have achieved before. Second, very important tool, uh, contingency measures. As part of the preparation for a no-deal Brexit scenario, in the same time with the national measures, I think the Romanian presidency was aiming to work together with the member states in order to limit the most severe damage caused by a disorderly Brexit in specific sectors where it could create a major disruption for citizens and businesses such as social security, youth mobility, transport and fisheries. So we have been able to do a number, uh, we, to adopt a number of uh, legislative proposals that I think are going to make it easier. Uh, at least to have to continue to have a continuity in the relationship between EU and uh, Britain on a, the, on the on a series of uh, of, uh, of issues as I mentioned social security Erasmus plus and especially uh, air transportation we had the policy debate on the multi-annual financial framework for 2021-2020 seven in public sessions, everybody was able to notice. I think it was the idea of the Romanian presidency to come with something that is framed uh, under two themes. This time it was about uh, climate change and migration. Uh, we were happy to see that the colleagues around the table took stock of the way we push forward the debate. On the other hand, I think it was a good opportunity to see that we are advancing on the MFF-related sectoral programs. We have done pretty well, I should say, from just from uh, one week before in the informal General Affairs Council in Bucharest, I think we added a number of uh, new sectoral proposals. So now we have Digital Europe, European Defense Fund, Justice, Rights and Values, Connecting Europe Facility, Life Program, and Space Program. We are as well pursuing work on the others, both in the Council and with the European Parliament. Uh, based on the agreements expressed today by the Member States, the Romanian EU Council Presidency will send, in the name of the Council, the report to the European Parliament and convey the Council expectation for a, for a fast resumption of work with the next European Parliament on the basis of what has been already agreed. About the thematic discussion I, dis I mentioned at the beginning, this is going to be part of the our contribution. I think we want to come in June at the leaders' discussion if, with an improved NEGO box. Uh, we, uh, in order to get further guidance at the political level. Uh, we discussed today as well the draft regulation establishing the instrument for pre-accession assistance. As you know, enlargement is a, a big priority for Romania's presidency, so I think having that done as part of the multi-financial framework, it's really a step forward because I think that when you discuss about negotiations and about the political process with the candidate countries, we have to discuss as well about the pre-adhesion pre funds. And uh, by agreeing on, or agreeing on that, I think it was really a step forward. And 
At the end of the day, uh, at the end of our discussion, we had a debate with all member states on the on the Council conclusions for the European Council at the end of the week. As you know, this is a council that is focusing on economic issues. So we spoke about jobs, growth, and uh, we adopted conclusions on several issues. We, we will try to propose several issues relevant for jobs, growth, and competitivity um, to further develop the single market, the capital markets union, the industrial policy, and the European digital policy. On climate, leaders are expected to reconfirm their commitment to the Paris Agreement and to provide guidance on the overall direction and political priorities to enable the European Union to submit a long-term strategy by 2020. On external relations, uh, we, we are preparing the EU-China summit to be held on the 9th of April this year. Uh, there was an important discussion on Council conclusion on this information. Uh, we know this is another thing the Romanian presidency put forward from the very beginning from the very start, from the very day, first day of the presidency. So uh, the European Council will discuss prog progress in tackling this information and then the need to protect the democratic integrity of the European national elections across the EU. Uh, so uh, the resilience and security of the EU democratic system, it's one of the key, uh, it's one of the key themes of Romanian presidency. It's of great importance in the election process that would be coming soon. At the end, we discuss the 2019 European semester. According to the European semester roadmap, in the run-up to the Spring European Council, each EU presidency intends to organize a number of thematic debates. The Romanian EU Council presidency envisages such discussions in COMPET and ENVI in February and March, in addition to the traditional exchange of views in EBSCO and ECOFIN. The main conclusions of this discussion are reflected in a report prepared by the Romanian Presidency that we presented today in the General Affairs Council, and that will be forwarded to the European Council. Regarding the European Semester Roadmap, the Presidency has updated it, given the late publication of the Council-specific recommendation on June the 5th. Uh, the Presidency finds it important that the relevant committees have the proper time to discuss the substance of the country-specific recommendations and DECOFIN and EBSCO to approve them. The Council also agreed to forward the draft recommendation on the economic policy of the Euro area to the European Council. Last but not least, I briefed uh, the colleagues on the main results of the discussion with the candidate countries in Bucharest last week. Uh, in view of the future enlargement package to be published by the Commission later this spring, as well as the preparation of the negotiations for the got conclusions in June. My initiative is to bring together the, uh, my initiative was to bring together the candidate states through their ministers, high official in charge of the accession negotiations and they generating a substantial exchange of views that would provide us with further momentum in this process. We, we try to see what they were asking from, from the union, how we could speed up their negotiations. And in the same time, we made very clear that the reform process is very important for each of them in order that they have, to, uh, first of all, to pass the benchmarks in order to be able to move forward. Uh, I, I mentioned to the ministers today the fact that the old representatives of the candidate states pointed out to their country's willingness to make the needed steps to advance on the EU path. Uh, that would be all about the discussion today. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. First Vice President, please. Well, George has been so comprehensive in his reporting on the Council that I have nothing to add. He said everything that could be said. Yeah. Should be more. Yeah. Okay, so we can open the floor for questions. Uh, yes, Zoltan, please. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Zoltan Jebay, Brooks Info, Hungary. My question is about the rule of law, the new events related to the new rule of law mechanism. Uh, as I understand, there is now a jungle. I'm referring to the Belgo-German proposal, which was uh, discussed today uh, during a breakfast meeting, and Mr. Franz Simmermans was attending as well, as I understand. So we have now a kind of jungle of different proposals and initiatives when it comes to the rule of law. Uh, Mr. Mr. Vice President, how do you see that, uh, how does the Commission intention to develop to further develop this rule of law mechanism would fit into the German Belgo uh, proposal. And uh, my question to Mr. Ciamba, uh, do you 
So given that uh, the European Parliament will have its last meeting, last plenary session in the middle of April, do you feel that the, during the Romanian presidency there will be any hearing when it comes to the Article 7 procedure related to Hungary? Thank you very much. Well, you refer to a jungle. I, I'd rather see it as a rose garden, frankly. Um, uh, all institutions contributing uh, for, with a spirit of cooperation to improving um, the rule of law in the Union and the Member States. Um, the European Parliament, as you know, has uh, given us a strong contribution on this. The Council is working on this, indeed, on the basis of an initiative uh, taken by Belgium and, and Germany. And I was really um, uh, struck by the fact that almost everyone who spoke this morning at the breakfast said that whatever we do, in addition to what we're already doing, it should reinforce the existing system. It should happen within the EU framework. It should use the capacities the EU already has. It should respect the position of the three institutions. It should use the external uh, capacity from the uh, um, uh, FRA in, in Vienna um, uh, and uh, the Venice Commission and other institutions. Fundamental Rights Agency, I say fra too easily for those of you who don't know what I'm talking about. Um, so I see this as a collective effort to improve the rule of law in the European Union and the member states. And I also see it as an effort to say that every single member state should be prepared to be scrutinized um, and also to do a peer review. That is the essence of the initiative that the um, Belgian and German uh, ministers took. So. I see this as reinforcing the rule of law, and certainly not, certainly not as a jungle, but it's a well-tended garden, frankly. Mm, no, thank you as well. You know, actually, about the peer review, I think we are on the same page, and, you know, yeah, the presidency is supporting the idea to have this mechanism, and I think we are ready as well to have our own contribution as a presidency to the Belgium uh, German initiative about uh, exactly what... Uh, First Vice President was mentioning it's about the interinstitutional setup, it's about the three institutions. I think in, in the case of Hungary, there is an issue that is, has to be related as well with the setup of the institutions and of the different legal opinions you know, that we get from you know, different, so to say, actors that are part. So the presidency has to be a honest broker and has to take into account you know, what is uh, the institutional setup and what are the legal opinions, which when it comes to a procedure that, uh, you know, exactly is for the first time, uh, it has no precedent in terms of uh, being activated before from the parliament. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Gabriela, please. Thank you, Gabriela Baczynska at Reuters. On the same um, question as Zoltan on the, on the German-Belgian um, proposal, um, Vice President, could you help us understand a bit more how does it strengthen the rule of law framework in the EU if it's voluntary, does not carry any sanction? You know, how does it build on Article 7, which has been um, stalled and sort of neither finalized, not, not cancelled on Poland for months? You know, the EU member states cannot agree how to move um, with Article 7 on Hungary. So what does this really change? It's a peer review without a solid mechanisms and voluntary, I'm, I'm lost. Thank you. Well, if I look back over the last couple of years, w w not just the last couple of years, for quite a long period of time, one of the biggest challenges we've been facing all this time is that uh, the EU is very good at being critical of candidate states and the rule of law as long as they're not members. But once uh, countries join the European Union, the member states sometimes have difficulty addressing each other's position on this. And I think this is an honest attempt by Germany and Belgium to create a space where member states could talk to each other about the situation in every single member state. But you should not see it, and that was clearly the position of the vast, vast majority of the people around the table this morning, you should in no way see this as an alternative to the existing instruments and the roles of the institutions as enshrined in uh, the rule of law framework, as enshrined in the treaty. So it is an additional element that would allow member states to sort of lower the threshold of addressing the situation in every single member state and to have a form of peer review. But it can in no way replace the other instruments uh, uh, we have. 
and you know you pass some judgments on Article 7, etc., etc. This process is still ongoing, and I think um, it will um, uh, uh, continue. Uh, to be uh, in the attention, certainly of the Commission, but also of the Council in the months to come. This is not something that's going to be dropped or stalled or whatever. It's going to continue, I can assure you. Thank you very much. That was all for today. See you later at the press conference after the JEC 15. Thank Thanks. you very much.